Hi YouTube, how you doing? Today we're going to look at SQL Server filtered indexes. We're going to look at how to create them, when they're used and when they're not used. It can be a bit confusing sometimes when you've got an index that isn't being used and we're unsure why. This tutorial will show you how. If you like it, please hit like for me. Subscribe for more index tutorials and more SQL tutorials. And as always, if you've got any questions, so let me know in the comments. Cheers. So here I'm going to show you filtered indexes and the pros and the cons, why we should use them, where we should use them and why they're not being used in some cases. So first off, why should we use a filtered index? A filtered index isn't anything fancy. It's just a trimmed down version or an optimized version of a non-clustered index, which are these here when compared to your clustered index just there. So the main improvement let me show you the values in this table. We've got three transaction types. Now P, for example, takes up 10% of the rows in the table. And after some analysis, we realized people aren't searching on these two values. They're only really searching on this because they're only interested in transactional history where the type is P. So we can create an index just on this, just on this value. So the main improvement and the main thing about filtered indexes is its size. It's a lot smaller. So that means you've got lower storage costs, you've got improved performance, the improved query performance, and your maintenance costs are a lot are improved. So overnight when you rebuild your indexes, it's going to be a lot quicker, which an end user is not going to care really about that. But for us who look after SQL Server, that's going to be great for us. The risks of a filtered index no real risks at all other than it not being used and it will be the opposite of the pros in that case the index won't be used we've got an index laying around that we'd rather not have and it's rebuilding indexes overnight that we'd rather it not so let's have a look at how they're used and how they're not so i'm going to scroll down here and I'm going to, this is our query i'm going to select from transaction history table where your type is p and let's have a look at the execution plan for that. Brilliantly, SQL has suggested we need an index on it. And if we hover over this, we can see under the object, right down the bottom, it's using the primary key, transaction history, transaction ID, which is this. And what it's doing here is saying it's doing a scan, which means it's looking through all the rows in the table. So if you look at the number of rows red, which is the sixth one down, it's looking at 113,443 rows which we don't want i want you to imagine for a minute as well imagine this table here has got a hundred times the values in there that's a lot of rows that it's reading that it really doesn't need to so what we can do is we can create an index on transaction type and then we can search for that and that's great she's an index seek on transaction type perfect that's what we want if we hover over this select here, we can look at the cost, the estimated subtree cost, 0 0.019. Now what we can do, we might, after some further analysis, we realize, as I said earlier, these are the only rows that have been read in this table. Or 85% of the time those rows have been read. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create a filtered index. Now to do that, it's just the same as this. We've obviously got to change the name here. I've put F for filtered and P for the type it's filtered on. But you've got to include your where clause. So transaction type is P. I'm going to create that. And we can see down here, we've got two new indexes. Now, if I run this query again, we can see down in the object, it's now using our filtered index. The rows red, it, it's around about the same as it would be with the clustered index, but the cost here is 0 0.0119. If I drop this index, let's compare that to the one with the clustered index with the non-filtered. Zero point zero one nine against this one here. Zero 
0 0.0119, so a, a huge, a huge improvement. I know in this example it's a lot, it's a very quick query, but like I said, imagine there's a hundred times more rows in there. The cost that SQL Server is, for SQL Server is a lot lighter, it's a lot easier. Your CPU is going to be lower, and your query is going to be a lot quicker. Now, there are some drawbacks here because let's have a look at this query here. So at the minute we're just looking for transaction type. But let's say the application um, is looking at it wants reference order ID in there as well. Um, so let's let's run this query and see what SQL's doing. Suggested an index. Cost of 0 0.7. That's a that's high. That's a lot higher than it was. Uh, which index is it using? It's doing a scan and it's using, if you look in the object section down there, the primary key. It's using this. So it's not using this, and surprisingly, it's not doing this because this index here it has no idea of reference order ID. So it's quicker for SQL just to use that, just to scan the whole table. So we might have to, we're going to have to change our query. So the lesson here: understand what your filtered index is targeting, because just because you're filtering on P, people might be wanting other rows, other other bits of information coming back, and this this will not satisfy the query, or well, the index won't satisfy this query. So we're going to drop this. And we're going to create it again, but this time we're going to include use an include section. So this is when you might use um, a filtered index with an include. Same again, where clause. And we can go straight back up to this query again. Execution plan. Now I'd think it would be, isn't it? It's using index seek, which is what we want. And if you look down at the object, it's using our new filtered index. Now, up here, for example, SQL's got a choice here. Now, it can use our filtered index or it can use our initial index that we've got here. And what it'll do, it will weigh up the cost of which index to use. If I look at that. It's using our filtered, and then if I go to here, It's not using our filtered index because this this index here is a lot it's smaller and it satisfies the query we need and the cost is a lot lower which is great so that's why filtered indexes are great when they're used and when they're not used